Hello and welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Uketsumbi. Flying drones are also referred to as remotely pilot aircraft systems, RPAs, or unmanned aerial vehicles, UAV. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, ranging from small handheld types up to large aircraft, potentially a similar size to airliners. With incidences of drones going across the runway in Heathrow and Gatwick airports in the United Kingdom, and more recently in the United States. Is Nigeria prepared to deal with drone activities that may pose a risk to commercial flights? That's our interest on today's edition. And our flight is set for takeoff. <music> A decade ago, drones as they are popularly called were virtually unknown. Presently, there is a huge global demand for the remotely piloted aircraft system. However, as fascinating as drones are, there is almost always a feeling of uneasiness attached to them. Let's get started with the definition, an unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, commonly known as a drone which is an aircraft without a human pilot aboard. UAVs are a component of an unmanned aircraft system which include a UAV, a ground-based controller and a system of communications between the two. UAS is an unmanned area system. It has to do with the aircraft itself, the aircraft itself, the software, the remote station, the remote pilot, the maintenance of that particular uh, manned aircraft as well. That, all of them makes a system. Okay, so. In terms of communication between the remote station, or remote uh, pilot station, and the, air, and the manned aircraft, software is already installed in the, on the manned aircraft. So communication actually is done by data, no, actually done by data between the remote, the remote station and the manned aircraft. Compared to manned aircraft, UAVs were originally used for missions too dull or dangerous for humans. While they originated mostly in military applications, their use is rapidly expanding to commercial, scientific, recreational, agricultural, and other applications. The pace of development of the drone market, both recreational and commercial, is incredibly fast. With this equilibrium comes the twin situation of opportunities and challenges that will require sweeping regulations to ensure safety. Then by 2028, they're looking at how it's going to become part of the Global air traffic control system as well. So there's a part of the process going on right now. It does like I I can have had has what they call the concept of operations for remotely piloted aircraft systems, which gives nations the guidelines to be able to be, begin to develop frameworks, legislation, and guidance materials towards allowing the operation of drones or RPS or UAV and all that within their national airspace and all that. Base actually is a major hazard for airplanes, for manned airplanes. You know, uh, so. If we, if we take that into account and look at unmanned aircraft, some of them are as small as the size of birds and all that. But again, don't forget the fact that they have metals, they have batteries and all that. So their, their impact with the aircraft is going to be much more severe than birds impacting aircraft. So there's high danger to safety and security. I'm not going to take safety alone, safety and security of the airspace. In the United Kingdom alone, there were 18 near misses between aircraft and drones in that country between July and October 2018. Out of the reported incidents, 12 took place in Greater London. The UK Airprox board said the highest risk of collision occurred when a large commercial drone was seen to pass within 20 meters of an Airbus A380 as it approached Heathrow. Drone sightings disrupted about 1,000 flights at Gatwick Airport in December. Departures at Heathrow Airport were also halted temporarily after drone activity was reported earlier this month. Heathrow has since deployed an anti-UAV defense system which can detect, track and ground problem drones, while Gatwick has also invested several million pounds and is now equipped to the level provided by the armed forces during its drone incident. For the Aviation Ministry, the actions of these drone users were not only irresponsible, but illegal. The law could not be clearer that this is a criminal offence, and anyone endangering others in this way faces imprisonment. A total of 120 near misses between drones and aircraft were reported in the year between December 4, 2017 and December 4, 2018. In the United States, 
The Federal Aviation Administration has rules that applies to different categories of drone pilots with the safety tips that exist to help fly safely in the national airspace and the approvals needed. Here in Nigeria, the federal government in October of 2018, as part of broad measures to stem the tide of insecurity in the country, banned the unauthorized acquisition of firearms and drones, among other items. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority also licenses drone use with the recreational users, not getting to the office of the National Security Advisor. Our guest is the Director of General Aviation at the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. Captain Dele Shashegbo, with about 35 years of flight experience in his kitty, is tasked with Nigeria's drone regulations, which is now up for contributions from stakeholders. Well, there are rules and regulations to prevent drones from flying near airports. Um, for the simple reason that airports are controlled from the control tower and the drones are usually controlled from a ground station somewhere which is most likely not in contact with the control tower. So in order to prevent a conflict uh, of um, uh, airspace usage uh, a lot of people have come up with the idea that five miles to the airport there must be no drone activity and um, if you're going to have a drone activity you must allow the civil aviation authorities to know when you're operating and what you're operating for we're very strict about drones operating above 400 feet and we're also very very um, concerned about drones that are flying without permission so it's giving us um, a separation of what the drones, drone activities should do and what the ARPAS activities should do. And let me give you an idea of what the ARPAS activity is. They are supposed to be for commercial um, operation. Say for example, they're doing flare tip inspection uh, with the oil and gas. And the flare tip is uh, when you're flaring gas, uh, you check whether the tip of the nozzles that are flaring and um, the, the gas, conver converting that to fire, right, uh, is uh, in good condition all the time that it's being used. So rather than shut down the gas, nowadays they've discovered the use of drones in actually flying, they're taking camera shots of it operating and then deciding whether they want to do a proper maintenance on those uh, flare tips. The regulations we're doing now are only for commercial activities. National Security Advisor has basically said, well, if you are going to use drones for um, commercial activities, we must know which drones are bringing in. Because there are several kinds of drones, you know, the drones for agriculture, uh, drones for uh, pipeline monitoring, uh, confined space, uh, drones which are basically uh, you fly them inside tanks to see where there are leaks and, and those uh, oil tanks and, th and so on and so on and also drones for military so you don't want people bringing in military drones uh, under the guise of saying that they want to use it for agriculture so that's a check and balance that uh, the um, uh, security advisor is also pipeline monitoring um, a lot of people it, intending to use it. It's much cheaper for them to use drones than to use uh, manned helicopters. So that is also being thought of. So with those, the Civil Aviation Authority know where they're operating. We usually uh, speak to um, the Nigerian Airspace Management Agency to get permission for their operation in the location where they're operating. Uh, usually, they have to be in uh, full contact with the ATC, air, air traffic control. And with that, we know where they are. With that, um, the general rule of 400 feet may not really apply. 
because since they are in touch with the ATC, they give them a level that is proper separation for manned um, aviation activities. We only have, um, I think about 150 have registered, which is not nearly enough. I think if you go out there, you probably find well over 5,000 drones of flying. Uh, drone activities are for toys. Um, please also be aware that anything above um, 250 grams uh, doesn't have to be registered with the civil aviation. But anything, anything below that, uh, anything above 250 has to be registered. For Nigeria to become the aviation hub for West Africa, governments must pay more than lip service to the sector. This statement is coming from the president of the National Association of Nigeria Travel Agencies, Bankoli Bernard. He believes quick transit transport from our international airport to our domestic airports must be in place. Fueling and refueling must be easy as well as proper infrastructure that will enable any airline that is coming to the country to do so. Mr. Bankole insists it is high time the country wakes up from sleep and understand the aviation industry is a sensitive one that requires the government's full attention. The Nigerian College of Aviation Technology says the Boeing 737-NG simulator aircraft is to be installed in Zaria after the building to house is complete. The rector of the school, Abdusalam Mohammed, says the simulator has been constructed and waiting for shipment. In addition, the school is also to install a simulator for firemen. This will be the first time a fire simulator will be installed in spite of the number of firemen in the country. Boeing's flying car lifts off in a race to the skies. As the American plane maker says, its autonomous flying car prototype has conducted a successful inaugural test flight as it seeks to revolutionize urban travel in competition with numerous rivals. Boeing's so-called low-stress mobility is competing with AC rival Airbus and numerous other firms to introduce small self-flying vehicles capable of vertical takeoff and landing. It's a technological field that could revolutionize urban transport and parcel delivery services. Boeing is also planning tests later this year for a package hauling version that can lift 500 pounds. Airbus has warned that it could shift future wing building out of Britain in the absence of a smooth exit from the European Union, predicting potentially very harmful decisions for its British operations in the event of a no-deal Brexit. The chief executive of Airbus, Tom Enders, acknowledged there would be no immediate change in the industrial presence, but issued its sharpest warning yet that future jobs are at risk. The world's second largest aerospace group employs 14,000 people in Britain, including 6,000 at its main wings factory at Brighton, Wales, and 3,000 in Filton, Western England. The UK's aerospace sector now stands at the precipice. Brexit is threatening to destroy a century of development based on education, research, and human capital. If there's a no-deal Brexit, we at Airbus will have to make potentially very harmful decisions for the UK. Which would be ironic, considering that back in the 1990s, mid-1990s, it was UK industry that were the architects of greater European aerospace integration. When we return after the break, Israel opens new airport to boost tourism in the Red Sea resort of Eilat. Do join us again. <laughs>